Welcome to this video presentation um, sponsored by OD Tech. I hope you it, it sounds like a great system. I was kind of intrigued by the way the, the views work. Does that mean you, you, you fundamentally change the table underneath the covers that the, ta the views are representing? So is there, is there one table with both versions of the data? Yes, it's exactly that. Um, perhaps the point that I need to draw out here is that in this new universe where we have additions in the database, some, but not all, objects can occur many times in as many different occurrences in as many different editions as is useful. The, the easy case to imagine is just two editions, one for the old, one for the new. Um, views and PL SQL objects, and for that matter synonyms, are like that. You can have as many um, different occurrences of a given view as suits your purpose. However, tables, by our deliberate design, are not like that. Tables, the vocabulary we use is, tables can't be additioned. Tables live outside this new world as they always used to. The exact purpose of that is so that they can hold data in common, so that, just as we said, the data that you had before is still there afterwards. And all the great exactly features we've had in the database for all these years continue to work. Yes, of course. Yes, yes. So back to your question then, a given one table will, during one of these edition-based redefinition exercises, have a view occurring in the old edition and a different occurrence of that same view, which has been changed in some way in the new edition. I see. So how would my different users take advantage of the different editions? How would that be implemented? Um, in such a situation as we're discussing now, where some people are deliberately using the old and some deliberately using the new, then when you connect to the database, you need to be able to say which one you want to use. And we achieve that by giving the service a new attribute, which is the preferred or the intended initial session edition. So what would happen in the scenario you describe is that someone responsible for the administration of this would make sure that users who should use the old edition know that they should start up their application using some spell that brings the one up that requests to connect using this edition who designates the old edition and vice versa for the new. I see. And as a developer, I could find out about this information by probably looking at the catalog like I've done with other things that are added to the database? Yes. Yes. Of course, you'd read the documentation first. And um, it's perhaps, heaven forbid, <laughs> perhaps well worth mentioning that there's a chapter dedicated to this new functionality in the application, the advanced application developer's guide. I've written a white paper too, and that's easy to find on OTN. Any internet search will find it just using the words edition-based redefinition. Um, okay. Assuming now that, that you've done all that and you know what's what and you want to look in a given database and uh, find out about what's going on right here and now, um, I guess the thing to understand is that an addition is an object like other objects and so those additions that you have will be listed in the DBA objects view and their type will be addition. Um, you won't see them owned by Scott or um, Blake or anyone like that. They are what we call non-schema objects. They're just like directories in that sense. Okay. Um, and correspondingly, you would, might see some triggers and some views. And when you investigated further using the, for example, the DBA views catalog view, you would see that a new column says whether or not it's an additioning view. And you'd see, ah, these are additioning views. Similarly, if you looked in the DBA triggers view, you'd see a column which says, is this one a cross-edition trigger or not? And you'd see, yes, these are the cross-edition triggers in play. So as usual, everything's, all well, the bases are covered. Oh, yes. And I can implement this as soon as I have 11R2. Yes, yes, indeed. And in case it's not crystal clear, um, you are someone in the development shop. Mm -hmm. In fact, you're one of the architects of the application. You've learned about this new, new feature, and you understand that you can deliver the benefit of online application upgrade to the users of your application I think by going about that. things in this new way. Mm -hmm. So it's not something I have to consult with the database administration people to do? Not in that sense, no. Um, ultimately, you will deliver a script, and that script will run 
at the installed site, and typically the person who loses their job if it goes wrong is not you, luckily for you, but, but the guy at the site. And so I would expect that those people who are running these scripts will naturally want a comfort level, and they'll get that comfort level by learning about this technology, but they will then be um, monitoring it rather than contributing original thoughts to its design. All right. So probably what we need to do next is download your white paper from OTN and dig up the documentation to make sure we fully understand this before we even think about implementing it. Of course, yes. Maybe uh, modesty would suggest a different order, that you would read the Oracle docs first and then read my paper. Wow, okay. All right, well, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thanks for giving me the chance to talk about this, and I'm only sorry I didn't use the full two hours. Ah, thanks. <laughs> thanks for watching this video presentation from ODTUG. For more information, go to www.odtug.com or come to our Kaleidoscope Conference in 2010 at the Marriott Wardman Park in Washington, D.C.